Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ann McClure and I'm a residential realtor with McInerney Associates and I'm licensed and work by referral in close in Northern Virginia and Montgomery County, Maryland. Um, so licensed in Virginia and Maryland. And uh, we've got folks who can help you across the river in DC also. Um, and we, I'm very excited to have um, one of my favorite people to work with on this Ask the Expert with me. So Sam Galbraith, thank you for joining us so much. We're happy Thanks to have you. Sam is a loan officer and a man of many talents, but today you get to hear about the loan officer side and he is with Draper and Kramer Mortgage. Sam is a long time, gosh, Sam, are you a native of the DC Metro? I was born in California, but I moved here pretty early on. I've been here ever since. Well, as, as native as we get, since we're such a transient, metropolitan region so anyway yeah. thank you. yeah we're so happy to have you with us today and um you're with a great lending organization and you and i've worked together for many many clients hopefully some of them are watching us or will watch us so thank you for joining us today we're eager to hear more about our topic which is adjustable rate mortgages they are making a comeback because of market conditions and um, our theme is sort of are they right for me because people have a lot of questions and it's certainly not as straightforward as the fixed rate loan. So sure. um, we're really, really happy you're with us today and you're gonna talk with us about it. We've got some really good graphics. And I know from practicing with you, we're gonna try and not get too deep in the weeds, but for those folks watching, if we do get in the weeds or there's something you don't understand and we run out of time, this recording will be available on my website. Sam will have it. It'll be on Facebook, it'll be on YouTube. And more than that, Sam is great about taking calls and questions. And he, I know, would be happy to answer any questions you throw at him. Um, and um, you can always reach out to me. So we're going to make this information available. And we just want you to know if it, it gets a little murky, um, you can have a live one-on-one -on -one conversation. It doesn't have to be video. But we are so happy you joined us for this. So um, oh. what were you going to say? I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, there's nothing more exciting than mortgage financing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as my mentor used to say, it's a sure cure for insomnia, right? So yeah, just go exactly. read, read about mortgages and underwriting guidelines. And you fall right asleep. Exactly. Um, so uh, I always like to give a quick uh, market update. And we had our sales meeting today. It's a really interesting time in the market. And I'm hearing this from people all across the country. You know, I was talking with my business coaches in California. I've got clients out of Seattle and um, some pockets are seeing a real slowdown. Um, just, a, just a change from going about hundred miles an hour to maybe 80 miles an hour, but it's still slower. Um, in other areas, we are still seeing multiple offers. And when I say areas, I mean, yes, geographic areas, but also price ranges and housing styles. So um, the market's very, I would call it kind of segmented right now. A lot of the slowdown has to do with interest rates and um, where buyers are, um, you know, mentally in, in their feelings about um, affordability because prices have risen so much over the last, gosh, I mean, dramatically since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, but I mean, just even this, in the past year, it seems like month over month, we just have crazy, crazy increases. So um, there are buyers who are concerned and we're starting to see the market shift some. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Sometimes that can be mean opportunity and um, people being able to have home inspections again with you know contingencies and um, contingencies for appraisal and financing. So overall, I would say the market is so segmented and um, I don't know, I can't think of another good word right now, but it, it very much depends on where you're looking, what your price range is and what kind of property you're looking at. And a good realtor can advise you on this. A good loan officer can advise you also. And we can help you understand market conditions and what you can do with your money and your purchase power. Um, so we'll get into more of that, but I just wanted to share that it's not gangbusters everywhere anymore. Um, it is still in some areas, but uh, certainly we're seeing a little shift. So not uncommon as we go into summer, but also we are, we have the rising interest rates, which is impacting things. Um, so that's the market update that I wanted to share. And um, Sam, as I mentioned, we are so happy that you joined us today. Um, 
as I was thinking about topics that I wanted to cover coming up, I realized that as I just shared about market conditions, so much has changed in the last few weeks, few months. And um, that's true of both the real estate world and the mortgage world. And really, I mean, the investment world too. You know, people are talking about the state of their retirement account or 401ks and so on. So um, rates have risen pretty significantly and buyers are much more worried about their payments. Um, and of course, you know, as we said, that that is also um, one factor in the changing market. And the other one is the, the increase in prices. So that's put a real crunch on some buyers. But there is a program out there that is having a resurgence, right? That's right. Adjustable you, rate mortgages. Adjustable rate mortgages. So when you guys see arms. Arms, arms, that's what it stands for, right? So yes. Sam, starting with the basics, can you share what is an adjustable rate mortgage and why might somebody want one? Yeah, so an adjustable rate mortgage is a, a mortgage with an interest rate that's fixed for an initial period, and then it adjusts periodically after that fixed period. Um, so it's a little bit more risky and a little bit more complicated than your average loan, but in return, you're going to get a lower interest rate and a lower monthly payment. Um, and we haven't seen very many of these over the last few years with interest rates being so low, but as interest rates are climbing back up, we're seeing a resurgence in, in arms um, and they're making, they're making a comeback. So an example of this would be like a seven, six arm would be a 30 year mortgage where the interest rate is fixed for the first seven years. And then it adjusts every six months for the remaining 23 years. Um, so, you know, again, it's a little bit more risky than a 30-year fixed. However, in return, the interest rate is going to be lower than the rate on a 30-year fixed. So you can get a lower payment, which helps with the rising prices of homes and the rising interest rates. And uh, I think that's why we're seeing kind of a comeback of arms. So can we talk a little bit more about the risk? Because I love this graphic. You know, it shows the ups and downs, which is also kind of a good um, visual synonym for, you know, turbulence in rates, right? Um, but I was speaking with one of my favorite experts today, actually a painter who we may have on in the future. And he was like, I told him this was coming up and he said, well, can, you know, why, why would somebody want an arm? I mean, aren't they really risky? And so, you know, you just mentioned they're riskier. In what ways are they riskier? Well, they're riskier in that, in this same example of let's say a seven, six arm, the rate's gonna be fixed for seven years. And so at the end of seven years, there's the potential for the rate to increase. And so you could be in a position where your monthly payment goes up and, and maybe if you hadn't budgeted for that or didn't expect it, um, you could be in a position where you could have trouble making your mortgage payment. And I think that's the big fear is that somewhere down the line, you're gonna be in financial peril because the interest rate has adjusted. But I think that if you understand adjustable rate mortgages, then you can make like a calculated, it's a calculated risk. Um, and they're certainly not for everybody. Um, but if you take all the factors into consideration, they really are a good option for some people to save money. So like, ideally, who is this loan good for? And who, let's do conversely, who is it not good for? Um, well, I think it's good for well, first off, if you think you're only going to be in a property for five or seven or eight years, then there's really no reason to have a 30-year fix. You don't need the rate fixed for 30 years. So you could get a 10-1 arm or a seven a seven-year arm where the rate's going to be fixed for the longer longer than the time you're going to be in the property. Um, and so, because the fixed period is shorter, you get a lower rate. Your your payment goes down, and that's going to be a, a big benefit to you. So that lower payment or the lower interest rate can offset, you know, maybe you had to go up higher than you initially thought you were going to have to go on your purchase price. Or maybe you thought rates were going to be at, you know, 4% and now they're at 5% and, and you're kind of not comfortable budgeting in the price range that you're in. So an arm can kind of bring the rate and the payment back down to something that you feel more comfortable with. Um, conversely, if if you're the type of person, <laughs> this is a great graphic because that's kind of what I what I say to everybody. Look, this mortgage isn't for everyone. And if you're going to be lying in bed at night, freaking out because this rate could change at some point, then this is not the mortgage for you. Um, there's, you know, it's, there certainly is more risk. And if you thought that this is going to be your forever home and you're going to be in this home for the next 15 to 
you know, 20, 30 years, then it would be silly to get a, a, a five-year arm because you would be putting yourself in a position where you could, you know, end up with a higher interest rate. Well, I like that you said this because we often remind people we on the real estate side, because I always think of the realtor and the lender as partners. And of course, we have other folks in the transaction. But, um, you know, at the, at the early stages when people are trying to figure out what can they afford and how much payment do they want and so on. You know, we always say you live in the payment. You don't live in the purchase price. And so that's why, especially now, I feel like going over these numbers with a loan officer it makes so much sense because as you said, you know, okay, you're in for one of these seven year arms, it adjusts at year seven and maybe six months later and six months after that. Well, what you could do going into it is say, we may be selling before then, but if we didn't, Sam, you know, will you run some scenarios for us, which we'll get into later, but it's always a good idea to have somebody run numbers for you. And then you know your worst case, right? I think right. I, I think we get in this... Um, we're sort of used to hearing like toward the fourth quarter of a year, we hear, you know, well, what are the forecasts for the new year? Well, where will rates be? And what are they saying about the housing market? Well, do forecasts for yourself too, right? I mean, are you likely to have that job promotion sometime in the next two years? Are you, is your career upwardly mobile? Um, will you have a, a partner or spouse uh, contributing? Um, will, you, will you be getting rid of some debt? You know, will you be done with some student loans? Will you be done with, um, I don't know, some, you know, you were helping a relative with something that was quite expensive. Um, so, you know, think about yourself also, because it's very easy to look at it and kind of freak out. But if you do a little bit of long-term planning, it's a little more palatable because you realize, yeah, I'm not going to be making, God, I remember my first job out of college. I was so happy. I, I was, they gave me a letter for 16000 a year. <laughs> <laughs> and now yeah. And I was so happy I had friends who were getting like 14, you know, <laughs> like I was like striking it rich, you know, but if you'd have given me, and I remember my first mortgage payment, I thought it was so funny, $777. That's what uh -huh. it was, 77. And I thought, you know, if, if you'd have told me, my God, it could go up to 825, I might've freaked out, you know, at that point in my life. But the truth was within a year, I was making more. And within a couple of years, I, you know, I got a new job and I was making more and, so, you know, you want to look at those kinds of things, too. And this list is fantastic, by the way. Yeah, I think this is a good list. Um, I think, you know, the last one on there, FHA or VA, uh, the reason that arms aren't a good idea is just because they're not available. Um, and that may change in the coming months, just like arms weren't really, you know, I mean, they were available. It's just when when the 30-year fix was at two and a half and the arm rate was at four and a half, <laughs> It didn't make sense, um, right. but, as, but as conventional and jumbo rates are rising, the arms, you know, rates are staying the same. And now you're in a position where you can get a better rate going with an arm. That isn't the case with FHA and VA, but um, probably in the next three to six months, I think you'll see those, you know, coming back as well. But yeah, all of these different factors are certainly need to be considered. I mean, and, and I mean, ideally you would have this arm and, rates as you know go up and down and in the next six months a year two years if rates dip back down again you could refinance into a 30-year fix or a 15-year fix or a different product or program that that is going to give you a lower rate or you know fit what your finances are before the the initial arm period ends um but that's certainly not guaranteed. And so you definitely want to make sure you understand all of the aspects of how the loan works before you get into it. Um, and it's, it's a, you know, it's for a little bit more of a financially savvy, savvy borrower. I mean, I, I mention it to people because it's very common these days when I am doing a, a loan application or pre-approval people, you know, you start talking about rates and everybody's shocked at how high the rates are. And well, can I get a lower rate? Well, yeah, you can, but you know, this is your option, an adjustable rate mortgage. And so it's very interesting how it's just really, it depends on people's personality and comfort and, and risk threshold. Some people say, oh, I'd like to hear more about that. Like, tell me how that works. And some people just say, nope, no chance. 30 year well, fix, that's it. <laughs> and those are the people I really wanted to speak to today because I think sometimes they go, no chance. And it's because they're not, they don't really know enough about it. And right. I always say to my, you know, my clients, like brand new clients, I say, you know, what, what, what I want for you is for you to be an educated and informed consumer, because then you're not going to have regret if you understand and you go into things understanding, 
you know, whether it's the condition of the house or your payment and what could happen with your payment, you know, I want you to be educated and informed. And a lot of times people have heard, I don't know, from their best friend, from the guy on the subway, who knows? Oh, don't do an adjustable rate mortgage, but it could be a perfect fit for them, you know? So exactly. I'm glad we're talking about it because it's been many years. I mean, I'm sure there are first time buyers or even second time who haven't, I mean, it's been many years since we've seen these. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, and somebody who's, yeah, I mean, there's lots of different examples where it would work, but maybe first time home buyers who are just looking to get their foot in the door and it's a young family and they're planning on having kids and this isn't going to be their forever home. They're planning on selling in the next three to five years and getting something bigger as their family grows. I mean, that would be, you know, something that they could consider. Yep. We're certainly not going to, you know, push you either way, but just make sure that you have all the information and then you can make an informed decision as to whether or not, you yeah. know, the lower rate and the lower payment is, is fits with, with your plan. That's exactly. Yeah. I feel the same way. Um, so Sam, I think that one of the things that people get intimidated about is the numbers because going, Oh, I'm going to get a 30 year fixed rate. So easy to understand, right? The term is right. 30 and it's a fixed interest rate, meaning fixed. It doesn't change. Right. And then you see something written out about an arm and you're like, Oh my gosh, it's like, what is it like alphabet soup and alphabet and number soup, you know, and it's like, there are all these numbers and slashes and letters, and it's a very long string. And what does this mean? And I don't have the brain capacity or whatever it is, you know, somebody could just be totally turned off, but I, I want to break it down. And I want to talk about what those numbers mean and some definitions so people can feel more comfortable when they hear about arms, when they see something in writing or, you know, call up questions, but let's, let's talk a little bit about, the various numbers and acronyms and what they mean if someone were to be looking at an arm. Okay. All right. Well, first off, all of the terms are outlined in the loan disclosures that are given to you that are signed. And, and you know, there's no, there's really no room for funny business there. Um, like, like there was in during the housing crisis, when you heard about some of these crazy arms that really kind of gave a bad name to, to the product. Um, so you're going to, receive the disclosures that outline all this. There's additional disclosures when you get an adjustable rate mortgage that just specifically discuss how the loan works. There's a handbook that goes out um, that explains it. So just, you know, it's important. The industry wants to make sure that you understand. Um, but so there's three kind of main things here. So I guess we'll just follow the graphic here. So on a seven one arm, that's going to be a 30-year mortgage that's fixed for seven years. The seven describes the initial fixed period. And then the one means it changes once a year for the remaining 23 years. Um, and if it was a 7-6 arm, that would be fixed for the first seven years. And then it would change every six months for the remaining 23 years. Um, and so you might see a 5-1 arm. You might see a 10-1 arm. 15-year uh, arms are popular, so that's a 30-year mortgage that's fixed for 15 years, and then it changes once a year or every six months for the remaining 15 years. So, I mean, that's a pretty long period. Um, you know, and we were talking earlier, I mean, the, statistically, you know, less than 15% of mortgages last 10 years. I mean, they usually get paid off, whether it's through selling the house or refinancing. So, you know, having an arm with a 15-year fixed period or a 10-year fixed period is is, you know, isn't that risky? Um, I mean, it certainly carries more risk than a 30 year fix, but it's not, it's not like having a six month arm where the initial rate is only fixed for six months. Um, I think about the lowest fixed period you'll see is a three one arm. So that's fixed for three, the first three years and then changes once a year or twice a year for the remaining 27 years. Okay. So that's, so that's the first part of it. Um, and then the second part of it is the adjustment caps. So the 225 here, this describes how the rate can change, the, the rules for how the rate changes after the initial fixed period. So the first number is how much it can go up the initial first adjustment period and only that adjustment period. Uh, so a lot of times you'll see like a five there in the front, which means like on the first adjustment period, it can go up 5%. Um, in this case, a two, two, five would mean the first adjustment period after the initial fixed period, the rate can go up 2%. So if you were locked in at four and a quarter 
for let's say seven years on year eight, the rate could go up 2% to six and a quarter. The next number is how much the rate can go up or down, I should say, up or down uh, every other adjustment period. So in this case, the first period and the and the, the every other adjustment period are the same, but a lot of times you'll see those numbers will be different. And that's just what that's describing. So in this case, if you had a seven one arm with a rate of four and a quarter in year eight, it could go up to six and a quarter. And then in year nine, it could go up another 2%. It could go up to eight and a quarter. And then the last number there is how much it can go up total throughout the life of the loan. So that means if the following year, in year 10, rates went up another 2%, it wouldn't go up to 10 and a quarter. It would just go up to nine and a quarter because it would be capped at 5% over the initial rate. Okay. Um, so those are, those are going to outline how the, the rate can change after the initial fixed period. So you'll see a 225, sometimes you'll see a 525. Um, VA and, and, and FHA loans a lot of times have like a 115. Um, so, you know, it can only go up 1% a year. Uh, sometimes it's capped at 3% total throughout the life of the loan. Um, but that's what that is. And so, then if you, or go ahead. Well, I just wanted to point out to people that it can go up this high. It, you know, it may not, it likely won't in a lot of cases go up 2% or, you know, 2% again on the second number. It, it may go up, what, a quarter, a half? I mean, who knows? You want to know the worst case scenario, but don't assume that it's going to go up too. It, it yes. can go down, right? I mean, they can go down. Well, that's, the, I mean, over the last couple of years, anybody who's had an arm, the rates have been adjusting down. So you could have a, in the same situation, a seven, one arm at four and a quarter. And if you're on year eight and it's adjusting, it might adjust down to three and a quarter. So, you know, it's not necessarily going to go up. Um, and I, you know, I feel like nobody really focuses on that too much because you want to make sure you're understanding all of the risks and, and really focusing on those. Yeah. Um, when you make a decision, you kind of have to plan for the worst case scenario. Um, mm -hmm. But that's pretty rarely, rarely what we see. And I mean, we haven't seen a rate. I mean, a rate of <laughs> nine and a quarter would be, I mean, that would be shocking. I mean, we haven't right. seen a rate like that since like the, the 90s, I think. Right. Yeah. And not that I can remember, unless you had like really bad credit. Yeah. Um, yeah so. And so yeah, so that's that piece. Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, sometimes when people see information about an arm written out, there's this sort of acronym of letters also, which is a reference to the index, right? Like if you were listening to in our area, WTOP, they'll mention the LIBOR or something like that, right? Yeah, and I think we added a slide on the next page that discusses that. So, um, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so the other piece of it is is the is how does the rate changed? So you're you're going to lock in this interest rate. Like, let's say you you get ratified and you say, you know, I want to go with an arm. You go with the seven one arm. You lock in the rate four and a quarter, and it's fixed for seven years. So at the end of seven years, it's going to adjust. Well, what what determines what it adjusts to? And there's, and it's, it's no mystery. I mean, it's basically two things. It's, it's the index, which is listed in the name of the arm. That's kind of the alphabet soup you're talking about. And then there's the margin, which is set by the lender. Um, and so the one we see most often these days is the SOFR, the secured overnight financing rate. I think that's currently like 0.79 and a margin might be two or 3%. Um, and that's all again, listed in, in the terms of the adjustable rate mortgage and it's disclosed to you so that you're, you fully understand like what you're getting into. Now, there's no way to know what the source, the secured overnight financing rate is gonna be in five years or seven years. Um, so it's gonna, but you do know what your margin is. So if your margin's 2% and the secured overnight financing rate is 0.79 and you're locked at a rate of four and a quarter, then when, your rate lock period ends on year eight, it would adjust down to the margin, 2% plus the index, 0.79. So your new rate or your fully indexed rate would be 2.79%. So fully indexed, meaning they've accounted for the index. Yeah, uh, so fully, the fully indexed rate is the index plus the margin. 
So okay. you'll see a 2% margin. You're seeing a lot of 3% margins these days. And you take those two together and that's gonna dictate what your rate is after the initial fixed period. And so you have the secured overnight financing rate. There's, you know, LIBOR is a real popular one. The treasury bonds are, are also uh, listed as, as, in, as well in, in adjustable rate mortgages. And so that's all, that information is all there. And so it just looks like mumbo jumbo, but this just gives you kind of an idea of what the, the different indexes are that are being used. Well, this is really helpful. And then I always think of things in a practical sense, right? So let's say I have this loan, it's, it's you know, year six and 10 months or something. How am I gonna be notified? And how, how close to the, to the time of the seven years, you know, will I get oh, a sure. oh, well, how, how do When does that happen and how does it happen? Well, you're, it, it happens in the last year. So in, in year seven, you're going to be getting a notification that says, hey, your, your rate is going to be up for adjustment. If it were to adjust today, this is what it would be. Again, here's the index we're using. Here's the margin. Um, so they're really, it's kind of over documentation to a point. I mean, it's still kind of correcting for all of the, the um, misfortunes of the, the housing crisis. And because there was so much confusion going on. So now it's just mandated that like, you're gonna receive emails. You're gonna, if you are doing online banking, you're gonna get notified. You're gonna get a mail, you know, in, in from the post office and, and you'll be notified of what's going on and, and they'll explain the timeline. And there's a lot of communications that happen at the end there. And then you can always call your loan officer. I mean, and, and yeah. ask them. Yes. I, mean, I, get, I get calls from people too that say, hey, my arm is coming up thinking maybe I should refi. And then we look at the numbers and it's like, well, your arm's going to adjust down. So maybe just leave it alone and you're going to get a better rate than if you were to refinance. So, And really, this is one more reason why I really encourage people do not just pick somebody off the internet. Like you want this person, this loan officer to be a, uh, you know, a consultant, you want to be able to call them and run things by them. I mean, there's a lot of value in that. The value is not just in the number, although your rates are good, but I'm saying it doesn't matter where you are in the country. I would always tell you, you want somebody who's conversant and available, who deals with good local appraisers. And, you know, you can think of as a consultant of yours, who you would refer to regularly, like you might your CPA. So- yes. A little plug for good loan officers there, but um, Sam, let's, you know, I, I think that um, we should look at some practical examples. So um, we pulled some listings from our region, uh, coincidentally listings I was involved in. And Sam, would you go over these numbers for us? Yeah, so in this example, you've got a sales price of 530 and uh, we just kind of try to use some round numbers. If you're putting 20% down, you're gonna have a loan amount of 424. Um, the 30 year fixed rate is at five and a quarter. Um, but if you were to consider an adjustable rate mortgage, an arm, the, the, the five, six arm, which is again, a 30 year mortgage that's fixed for five years and then changes, uh, once every six months for the remaining 25 years. So it has more risk. However, it has a better interest rate. So the rate's 4.625. So if you look at the payment on that, instead of having a monthly payment of 2341, for the 30 year fixed, you'd have a payment of 2180 for the adjustable rate mortgage. So you're gonna save 160 bucks a month and you know almost $10,000 over, over five years. So it's, it, again, it's, it, it's not for everybody, but it, it is certainly something to consider. Like if you were, you know, maybe initially you were looking at a home that was 430,000, but now that same home is 530 and so your payment keeps going up and you're, you know, this is a way to, to kind of eat, eat that payment a little bit and get it back down into your comfort range. Uh, to bring it back to, well, I mean, $161 will go a long way too towards your gas tank right now, right? So. Yeah, yeah that might even fill it up once. <laughs> All right, <laughs> your next example. Right. Um, I'm trying to think here. Oh, did I go too fast? Um, hold on a sec. I want to just make sure. Yeah, go back. Go back to that one, please. I want to just say one more thing on this. So if you also decided perhaps, you know, because home prices are going up and maybe you're pinched on cash, instead of putting 20% down, maybe you want to put 10% down. Um, 
well, gosh, then you're, you know, and if you put 10% down instead of 20% down, um, you know, you're going to have a greater loan amount, a greater monthly payment plus mortgage insurance. So your payment would go up um, $375 if you were to put 10% down versus 20% down on this example. Um, however, with the same example of the, with the arm, your payment would only go up $200. So, you know, that you might rather keep that extra 10% in the bank or you might not have the extra 10% to put down with home prices increasing. And so the arm is a way to kind of keep the monthly payment down again. I mean, just along the same lines. Um, That's great. That's really good to know. Yeah. Because you're right. It has 20% down, especially with the way things have gone up. Right, exactly. And I mean, especially with, with first time home buyers, you were, it's, we're not seeing that many people putting 20% down. So if you're putting less than 20% down and the payment's really starting to jump up, you know, this is the answer to the question I always get, which is like, well, how do I get a lower rate? How do I get my monthly payment down? Well, this is, this is an option. Yes. All right. Should we look at the next one? I don't want to. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to add that. Um, and I had ran the numbers on, on that one and not this one. So, um, yeah. So in this example, this is a gorgeous house, 1.275 million. 20% down, put your loan amount at a million 20, uh, 30 year fixed rate at 4.75, the payments 53.21, uh, adjustable rate. Actually, in this case, the five, six arm and the seven, six arm have the same rate. So you obviously take the, the longer fixed period. So the seven, six arm has a rate of four and an eight and a payment of 49.43. So that's going to save you $378 a month and, I mean, over $22,000 in the first five years. So it's that's certainly right. something, something to consider uh, if you're, you know, analyzing your cash flow. Yeah, that's really something to consider. Now, um, I could see, you know, people, I mean, we, let's see, you have a stat that the average mortgage is 10 years or something, and the average move time um, before the pandemic was seven years in our region that people tend to hold onto a house seven years. I think since the pandemic, it increased to nine because people okay. just weren't moving as much. Right. Um, and there hasn't been inventory, but still, I mean, that speaks to what you were saying about you're probably not going to need the 30 year mortgage. So right. um, anything else you wanted to add on those scenarios? No, I mean, I think the, the proof is, is in the pudding, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's, yes, it's a riskier loan, uh, yes, it has a lower interest rate. So there's pros and cons. You're going to get a lower interest rate and a lower payment. And so you need to just kind of think about your your family's plan and how long you're going to be in the property and take everything into consideration and, and think about if that makes sense for you or not. Um, Good. I think that's about well, it. So, Sam, I know we're running a little long, but it's such a good information rich topic but when people, you know, like if people said, Sam, you know, I, I trust you, my family's worked with you, whatever it is, your, your friend Ann referred me, um, and we're thinking about an arm, you know, what, what would you tell them to think about or what would you tell them to consider? Um, this up. Well, what'd you say? Sort of summing this up. like. Oh, right. Say? Well, I, I think, yeah, just, uh, I mean, it's a... <laughs> It's a sharp pencil exercise, as my dad would say. You really have to just, you should have, first off, with any mortgage, you should have a budget. I mean, you should know what your budget is and what you can afford. And then you should try to think about how long you're planning on being in this property. I mean, if this is a move up house and you've been saving to buy this house and this is where you're going to raise your kids and hopefully your kids are going to come back after college and the grandkids and you're going to be in the house forever, then maybe an adjustable rate mortgage isn't right for you. Um, but on the other hand, maybe you feel like it's worth the risk. I'd rather I'd rather take the risk because I think in the next five or seven years rates will dip down again, and which case, and then we'll refinance and take advantage of lower rates long before the fixed period ends. Um, and if we're still in the house and rates have gone up at the end of the fixed period, we can we can afford if if mortgages go up because you know we're well within our budget. I'm sorry if mortgage rates go up and the payment goes up. Um, and again, that just harkens back to the budget. Um, and then on the other hand, if, if you are, you know, you were looking for a house that was 500 and now all of a sudden it's 600, um, you know, and you only have a certain amount of money and your budget's tight, um, 
I, I don't know. You may decide that it's just too risky for you. But I think ultimately, at the end of the day, you just it's how you feel. I mean, some people have no problem with it whatsoever. And they, they would any opportunity to save some money and get a lower payment and a lower rate. They're all for it. And you know what? If rates go up in the future, they'll deal with that. You know, they'll cross that bridge when they come to it. And some people just are, are risk averse and they don't like it. And just the thought that that, that, that rate's going to change down the line is going to keep them up at night. And I think, yeah. you know, just go with your gut. And my job is to just give you the numbers. You know, let me just make sure that you understand the numbers and can make like a, a you know, an informed decision. Um, because it is a risk, but you, you want to make sure it's a calculated risk that you understand. Yeah. So weigh your options. Talk yeah, with weigh your options. Exactly. Talk with a good professional, you know, look at your household budget. Think about your upward mobility or th big pieces that might change in your financial um, picture in your life. Yeah, you were, ta you were talking a lot about that. I mean, when we were talking the other day about, you know, maybe you have all your student loans paid off now or your cars paid off or, you know, some debt that you had is, is going to be paid off in five years. So you'll have two or three hundred, four hundred less dollars a month obligation and monthly debt. So if the payment goes up, you can, you'll be able to handle it. I mean, that's something to take into consideration as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sam, this has been so good. And I think not, this hasn't just been good because I think a lot of these ask the experts have been good. I'm biased, but this one is like, I love it because it's so relevant and it's information people really need right now. And I really appreciate you putting a lot of time and energy into this. I appreciate Jennifer working so hard on the slide. She did a great job, Jennifer, thank you. Um, and I'm so glad you were with us today. We just had your contact information up on the screen. And for anybody watching this, if you ever need to get in touch with Sam or you have questions for me about working with him, I'm happy to answer. We'll always help you get connected. Um, I would say, even if you're not in this area or you have a loan officer you like, we've given you really good fodder for conversations you could have with them and questions to ask. Things yeah, to sure. Yeah. So, um, but please, you know, feel free to get in touch with Sam if you have any questions. He's very good to work with. Um, Well-priced money and good timelines. Um, and uh, don't keep us a secret. Please share, ask the expert with friends, family, colleagues, you know, who might be in the market or considering getting in, or if there's some cocktail conversation about an adjustable rate mortgage, you could share the link. We would love to uh, answer any questions we can and, and uh, help anybody that we can through this process. So um, there's a lot of information. Sometimes it's like drinking from a fire hose. So um, so anyway, thank you for joining us for another ask, ask, episode of Ask the Expert. Sam, thank you for being our guest today. Oh, thank you for having me. This was great. I love Ask the ask Expert. I'm a big fan. I appreciate you including me in it. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you. So um, everybody, thanks for joining us. Please know you can find us on YouTube, my website, Sam will have it, or Facebook. And we'll catch you next time for another episode of Ask the Expert.